What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Poker Vlog. I don't know about you guys, but here in the Midwest we are getting blasted by an ice storm, snowstorm, insanely cold temperatures. So we've been hunkered down, but we made a trip down south. We're going to take you with us. We head to Tulsa Hard Rock. We play a very interesting session full of a lot of really weird hands. Going to need a lot of advice, but I need you guys to get in the comments and let me know. I'm trying to schedule another trip down south. Let me know another southerly location where you've had a good poker playing experience. It's a plus if you know to let me film. We're looking to go somewhere warm. It's way too cold here. Look at this forecast. This is not something I want to be a part of. Hit that like button. Let's get into the action. Headed off to Tulsa. Rolling into the Tulsa Hard Rock looks like a super nice property. It's around 3 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. We have no idea what kind of games are going to be running right now, so we're going to go ahead and head in, get on some lists. We're down to play anything up to 2-5 or 5-10, so let's see what they have going on. Unfortunately for us, there was a tournament going on, so we were in for a little bit of a wait before we get into the cash games, but eventually we do. We're buying in for $300 here. That's the max at this 1-2 game, so that's what we're buying in for. Time to get after it. Let's get some hands. First interesting hand of the night, we're looking down at pocket tens from the hijack. We see a middle position player open to $7. We don't really know what this game is going to be like. We don't really know what the action is going to be like at this casino or at this table. But when we see a raise, we've got pocket tens. We're in late position. We're in the hijack. We're going to go ahead and bump it up to $25. And when the action folds back to the initial raiser, we're eventually going to see him put in the call. So not too sad to see that. Obviously, we've got a very playable hand here. Kind of wouldn't have been too disappointed to see maybe one more player come in. I also think I could have used a bigger size. But the flop comes down, a pretty good one for us. It's queen, queen, three. So on a paired board like this, we're either way ahead or way behind. I decide after my opponent checks to me to go ahead and bet out $30. I don't actually like this. I think I should either bet a smaller sizing or a much larger sizing. Anyway, eventually, after he goes into the tank for a little bit, he makes the fold. We're going to go ahead and take this one down. Nice to win a hand. Nice to rake in some chips. We are off and running here at the hard rock. Looking down at 10-9 suited this time, we're in the cutoff. We're going to open up to $15. And wouldn't you know it, guys, playing in a public game at a casino, playing low stakes, we're going to get a lot of callers here. We get not one, not two, but three callers. So we're off to see a flop. We're going to be in position in this hand, so that's nice. But we really are going to need to connect if we're going to have much of a chance of taking this down at all. Flop comes down. Pretty weird one. Good for our range, though. Early position player bets out $10, which is super, super weird to me. What is he going to be doing this here with here exactly? When the action folds to me, I've got a decision to make. I can either just fold or I can try and put my opponent to some kind of test. I decide we're going to bump it up to $45 as his line, to me, makes absolutely no sense. He goes well into the tank for around 30 seconds, so I guess not that far into the tank, before eventually shoving all in for around $150. Obviously, we don't have much of a decision here. We're going to be making the fold. I probably don't need to be thinking that people are capable of bluffs or even block betting at this table. I think this is going to be more of a situation where we're going to need to be able to show down some value to win. And hand number three, we're down at the second best hand ever created. We've got pocket kings from the small blind. We see an active player from early position open to 10. Obviously, you guys know what we're going to do here. We're bumping it up. We've got the Cowboys. I'm going to raise to $40. And pretty quickly, without thinking about it for too long, our opponent ships it all in for around 80 bucks. Well, no decision to, ha to be made here for us. We're going to snap call. We've got Kings. And wouldn't you know it, we get some pretty wild uh, information here when he shows down pocket aces. No help for us on the flop. No help for us on the turn, and no help for us on the river. So we're going to be doubling up an opponent here. Feels pretty bad. Although, if you're going to run kings into aces, it feels pretty freaking great to ha only have your opponent have $80 in front of him instead of any of the very large sums of money that I could have lost if, got, if I would have gotten put in this exact same situation in one of my higher stakes sessions. So, oh well, shaking this one off. On to the next. Picking up the Ace-10 offsuit on the button this time, I'm going to open it up to $15 after I would assume there's some limpers to me, and we get four callers. So we're going five ways to the flop here. Kind of annoying. Obviously, I need to up my open size, I think, if that's what it's going to take. But off to see a flop anyway, and it's a good one for us. We're flopping top pair with a backdoor straight draw, I suppose. When the action checks to me, as I expected to do the vast majority of the time, I'm going to bet out $25 here. I think that's a pretty reasonable size. I think I could actually go bigger and probably should go bigger. Unfortunately for us, we get two callers. So that is not what the plan was. The plan was to get everyone to fold or to go heads up to the turn. Anyway, that's not what we get. 
Turn comes down, the Six of Diamonds, action checks to me once again. So I think in this situation with a card like that, that's gonna bring in a lot of straights, I'm gonna go ahead and check it back. And we're off to see a river, which comes down the Three of Diamonds. Get some pretty weird news pretty quickly when the big blind shoves all in for $50. Early position player folds, and I asked the other player if he'll show me if I call if I fold. Eventually, after thinking about it for a second, he tells me that he will show me, which usually makes me much more likely to make the call. Luckily for us, though, in this one, I decide we're gonna go ahead and I put in the fold, and he shows us 9-5 offsuit for the straight. So we are getting called by nine high on our pre-flop open, so we need to up our sizing here. I'm about to sound like a broken record in this one, but we're in the cutoff. We've got King Jack of Clubs. I'm gonna open to $15 over some limpers, the thing we've been doing all night long. I need to be opening to a bigger sizing, but we get some pretty weird noise when the lady next to me on the button raises it up. She makes it $40 to go. This is not the kind of player that you are gonna expect to see raising light. I do have a decent hand to take down a bigger hand. Obviously she could have something like ace-king here, but I honestly don't think she's going to be doing this with ace-king. I think she's much more likely to have pocket pairs like aces, kings, and queens, jacks, maybe pocket tens, but probably not. Anyway, eventually, after thinking about it for a little bit, you guys know what I'm likely to do here. I go ahead and talk myself into a call. What are we gonna do if we flop a flush draw here or something like that, or if we just flop top pair? I guess we're gonna get it in against this opponent. It's not gonna feel very good though, and it doesn't feel very good for us when the flop comes down at nine high with one club. I end up checking. What else am I really gonna do here besides put in the check? She doesn't think about it for very long, guys. She's gonna put out a bet. She has 50 bucks. We're gonna put in the snap fold, and this very nice lady ends up showing us pocket queens. So yeah, not gonna be winning this one. She had a premium like we thought, gonna be taking that in consideration down the road. Looking down in pocket fives in this one, we're in late position. We see a middle position player open to $10. I call and shock of the year, it goes like five ways to the flop. So extremely multi-way. Obviously we've got one card in mind that we're looking to hit. Flop does not bring us one of those cards though. So when the action eventually checks to us, we're gonna go ahead and check. And sure enough, we get a free turn card, which bingo is a five. The preflop limper bets out $12, and when the action folds to me, I think it's time to go ahead and put in a raise right now. Maybe that's a little bit aggressive, but I can tell they think I'm very aggressive at this table anyway, so I bump it up to $35, and he goes well into the tank. I'm not sure what he's really going to have here that he needs to tank with. Surely he should know, like, if he's got top pair, he's probably going to call. I don't know, though. Maybe he would just fold. Kind of a weird spot. Hard to really put a good idea into my head of what he would have, but eventually he folds. We go ahead and show our hand just for fun, and we take this one down. A little late hitting the record button on this one. We've got queen nine of diamonds from the big blind. I end up calling $5 preflop and shock of the year. We go several ways to the flop. This time though, it's a great flop for us. It is queen nine eight, so we are flopping two pair. The small blind checks, I'm gonna bet $15, and we are hoping that we can get some action here, obviously after flopping two pair. Unfortunately, we see one fold, two fold, and three folds, everybody folds. I have no idea how nobody can have anything on that kind of board. We take this one down, not nearly the pot that we were hoping it would be, obviously after flopping top two pair there, but oh well, not gonna complain about winning a pot, even if it's a small one. Looking down at 10 seven of hearts from the button, I decide after there's a bunch of limps to me, we're punishing the limpers, we don't care if our hand's not very good at all, we bump it up to $15 and we get like six callers. Guys, this is crazy. Like. People don't want to open preflop, but man, they'll call anything. So we just need to be opening up wider ranges for bigger sizes, I think, or tighter ranges for bigger sizes. Either way, we got to deal with this flop. The flop comes down a great one for us, though. It's queen four seven with two hearts. When the action checks to me, we're definitely going to put out a bet here. There's a bunch of money in the middle, a whole bunch of money. You wouldn't have thought that from the way this hand began, but we're going to go ahead and bet out $55 here. I think that's a very reasonable size shipping those chips out in the middle, and we see our opponents go into the tank. They don't know what to do here. Whatever they limped with and then called with, I guess it didn't end up being very good because we see one fold and then another fold. We see a little bit of tanking, and then we see another fold, and eventually everybody just folds. So we're going to go ahead and take this one down. We were prepared to play a big one with our pair plus flush draw, but oh well, like I said, we take it down. All these limp callers, I'm not used to playing in games like this, I'm used to playing in much more active games. We need to make some adjustments. Hopefully we can do that going forward. 
We're under the gun this time. We've got 10, nine of clubs. I decide we're gonna open it up again. Here, we're opening up to 15. And as the action progresses around the table, we're getting some calls. Nobody's giving us very much credit. I guess we've been opening a decent amount of hands, but I don't think it's been crazy. We end up getting four callers, so we're going five ways to a flop, which is not about the best one for us. We got one club, that's it. Big blind checks, I'm gonna go ahead and see bet here. I don't know if this is a good idea at all at this point. I feel like I shouldn't be playing this way. I feel like we need to tighten up or something. I don't know. Tell me how to win in these low stakes casino guys, please. I bet $20, like I said, it folds to the big blind who raised it up to 40 bucks. That was not what we wanted to see. You're really getting frustrated at this point. Not really sure what people are min raising me with here. Not really sure what the point of min raising and not really sure what the point of the way these people are playing in general is. But hey, they've got a fish on the hook. I'm gonna go ahead and make the call. There's lots of good turn cards and he's fairly deep so it's somebody that I could possibly stack. But I still think it's awful. Turn comes down, a brick. So we're immediately punished. He bets out $100. Obviously, we're just going to fold. We don't get to find out what he has, but a poorly played hand from us. And I just feel like we're not getting any credit at this table. And we're also not making any hands. Looking down at a suited almost wheel ace in this one, we've got ace, six of clubs. I end up calling the $5 straddle because I thought it was a raise. And we end up going like five ways to the flop. So yeah, mistake by me here, I suppose. But at this point, I'm getting pretty frustrated. Every time I make a raise, I'm getting a whole bunch of callers. So should be fine with that. It shouldn't be a problem, but hey, we just need to adjust next time. Bigger sizing, yada, yada. Flop comes down a six, two. So we are flopping top two pair. I bet out $10 and everybody folds. So yeah, I don't know. Do I have some sort of tell? Do I have my hand like tattooed on my forehead? I don't know what's going on here, but we take it down. So on to the next one. Looking down at 6-4 of diamonds from the cutoff, we end up limping preflop. I know I should either raise or nothing here, and probably nothing because it's only 6-4 of diamonds. But anyway, we end up going like four ways to the flop, and we get pretty quickly rewarded. The flop is a very good one for us. It's 9-6-4, so we're flopping two pair. The action eventually checks to me, so that's not too bad of news. Surely somebody's got a heart draw or something here. I don't know. We decide we're going to go ahead and bet out $10 and pretty quickly we get two callers. So we're happy to have some customers. Obviously it's a great flop for us, but it's not the best turn in the world for us guys. This is not the turn of our dreams. This is not the turn that we had in mind. It comes down the queen of hearts. So the front door flush draw gets there immediately and we get some additional bad news when the under the gun player bets out $30. Yeah, um, pretty sure this should just be a snap fold for me given the player type and given the kind of game that I'm in. But I think you guys know the way this uh, session is going right now. I'm probably not going to be making the fold. I end up eventually putting in the call here. We can hit two pair and maybe we can stack an opponent. I don't know. I think this is terrible though. This is the most face up flush I've ever seen. River comes down the seven of hearts. So now we've got four hearts on the board. My opponent shoves all in. So that feels kind of bluffy, but what are we going to do here? We've got two pair on a four flush board. We're folding. We're out of here. This session continues being very, very annoying. Looking down at Jack-10 offsuit from the cutoff this time, I decided we're going to open it up to 10 bucks. I think there's an accident. I think I made, meant to open it to 15, but oh well. We see the small blind and the big blind both make the call. So we're off to see a flop, which is basically the blankest of all flops. Action checks to me. I decide to check back. Turn comes out an ace. Obviously, that should be a fantastic card for me. Both players check. I bet $10 and one thinks about it and then calls and then the big blind really clearly wants to raise like his hand goes towards his chips and the whole nine yards and then he like stops and like redoes it but eventually just calls so they both call we're off to see the river which comes down a jack so great card for us we've got a pair now but the small blind checks and our other opponent bets out thirty dollars pretty weird spot i instinctively one it would want to call here but he was so weird on the turn so, so weird. He definitely has an ace here or some other strong hand. Maybe he had like ace eight or ace deuce and now has a very strong two pair. We're not paying this guy off. We can't be paying this guy off here. I think it'd be terrible. Also, there's another player to act, but he's a fairly new player that was playing most of his hands face up. So we're gonna fold here because of his weird, weird tell on the turn. I'm very confident we are correct. He tried to give some sort of story after I said I folded because he tried to raise the turn, but there's no way. He definitely had a made hand. Oh well. We lose this one. Things continue to trend downwards. 
Looking down at Ace-3 suited in this one, we're in the hijack. There was a button straddle and several players call it, so you know what I'm going to do when the action finally gets to me. We've got a suited wheel ace. We're in a pretty good position. We're going to go ahead and bump it up. I make it $25 to go, which I feel like might not have actually been enough because we fairly quickly get not one, but not two, but three callers. So off to see a flop, which is not a super fun one for us. It comes down nine high with one heart, so we really kind of whiff here. When the action eventually checks to us, we're going to just go ahead and check here. I don't really think we have too many other options, especially when it's this multi-way. Turn comes down, a very good card for us though. It's the 10 of hearts. So now we've got the nut flush draw and when the action checks to me this time, we are not going to be checking. We're going to go ahead and fire out here. We're going to bet $40, which felt like a bigger sizing given the way the game was playing, but it's not a big enough sizing apparently because we get not one, but two callers. So we are off to see a river. Please, dealer, one time. Can we hit a draw one time today? We cannot. River is the 10 of clubs, so that really sucks for us. Action very slowly checks over to us. We're going to go ahead and check also. And eventually, when we get to showdown, we flip over our ace high. And a player in middle position eventually shows jack eight and somehow wins this hand. So we know the old dude that we picked up a tell on earlier is coming after us, but... Really, we're just frustrated we couldn't hit a draw. Cannot come up with anything positive in this session. On to the next one. Let's hope we can turn it around. In one of the crazier hands of the night, we're looking down at ace-queen offsuit. Someone opens to $12 from early position, and there are like five callers to me. No exaggeration. Okay, obviously here, we're going to raise it up. We choose a sizing of $65. I think I could have gone bigger than that, but that ends up being a very convenient sizing because we see one player call and is all in for almost exactly $65, ends up eventually there are three players who are all in and have called $65. So you can tell the table's been playing a little bit short. In more annoying news, there's a player in the small blind who eventually also makes the call and has around $300 behind. So really weird spot. There's a lot of tanking in this hand, which was pretty freaking wild, but we can feel pretty good if we can just flop an ace or a queen. We're going to be in really good shape in this hand. Once the dealer pulls all these chips into the middle and figures out the side pots and then has a discussion with one of the players who's all in for $65 and can't imagine the dealer calculated the pot correctly, spoiler alert, he did, we're off to see a flop. The flop eventually comes down king high with two hearts. Yikes, couldn't we have flopped an ace one time? The only opponent that has chips checks. I also check. Turns down a jack. We both check again. River comes down the two of diamonds. <sighs> I hate my life. We couldn't come with a pair in this very big pot. We end up checking it down. My opponent to my right has pocket eights. And you guys are not going to believe this, but somehow he wins this entire pot. What do these people have? I saw one other player had ace queen, so most of my outs were gone. Very annoying hand. We're very tilted at this point. Should have just picked up and left, honestly. That would have been the best idea, but we're all the way in Tulsa. We've got a long drive ahead of us for when we do leave, so we just put it off. We lose a huge one. You see the chips getting shipped across the table. Devastating. Looking down at Jack-6 offsuit from the big blind. Kenny, how are you going to play a meaningful hand that you should include in your vlog when you have Jack-6 offsuit? Well, guys, you're about to find out. I'm in the big blind. I end up checking preflop, and we go like five ways to a flop, which comes down Jack high. So that's pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and bet out. I bet $15 here, and we get two callers. So what can these po people possibly have? I'm smelling some flush draws, possibly some straight draws, something like that. Or who knows, maybe they've just got a better jack than me and I'm about to get coolered. Well, turn comes down the six of spades and this is where things get a bit crazy. The action checks to me. I decide we're gonna bet out $40 here to charge flush draws and hopefully cooler somebody with the worst two pair or some sort of other draw or a better jack or that's now worse. But that's not what happens. We get some very weird news when the small blind raises to $80. This player is relatively new to the table. He's already changed seats once, so he seems like one of those players that thinks they're really sharp but is actually kind of clueless. When I see this raise, I'm extremely fed up. Nothing's gone right for me all day. I've got two pair, and I'm either ready to get back to even so I can get out of here or lose my money so I can get out of here. So we end up shoving all in for around $190, and my opponent goes well into the tank, guys. This dude goes in the tank. You're not going to believe what he's tanking with here. It makes absolutely no sense. This is why casino games have been something I haven't really sought out because a lot of times they're a lot like this. We've got a guy well into the tank here with 
quite the hand. He asks for a count and the whole nine yards. He needs to know how much he's having to call here. Even though he's got me slightly covered, he bought in for the maximum, you know, because he's so sharp and he has to like move seats so he has better position and stuff. Eventually, after thinking about it for an unreasonable amount of time, like around 30 seconds or more, he flicks in one chip to make the call, you know, because he's so cool. At this point, I'm thinking maybe I have the best hand. He shows 7-5. He had the nuts. He was tanking with the nuts. He's so clueless. He's tanking with the nuts. River comes down to five, which is meaningless. What is going on here? Dude is tanking with the nuts here, and he said it's because he didn't have any diamonds. Like, what is going on here? Was this dude really hesitating to put in money with the nuts? Anyway, I'm stacked. I'm out of here. Down 500 bucks on the day. Another bad day. Another losing session. Pretty frustrated. Yikes. We're out of here. We've got, we're in a game where we've got people tanking with the nuts. This is not it. Get me out of here. Get me out. Well, guys, that's all we've got for this one. You can see the totals for this session right over here. Obviously not what we were looking for, not the kind of results we you hope for when you make a long trip like this, but what are you going to do? Oh, well, Gimli still loves me, even though I lost. Hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, we'll have another one coming at you on Tuesday, no matter if we win or lose. Hopefully we can break this losing streak. It's been a tough one lately. Also, let me know in the comments if you've got a warm weather place that I could make a good poker trip to. I'm out of here. Have a good one. We're going to break this losing streak before too long. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.